<laughs> now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King, one you huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, the owl is a wise old bird, and here's my idea of someone who's plenty smart, too. It's the fellow or girl who eats a nourishing breakfast of Quaker Pup rice or Quaker Pup wheat with milk or cream and fruit. These king-size, ready-to-serve premium grains of rice or wheat are shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. No fooling. Wheat or rice shot from guns is so crisp and tender, it melts in your mouth. It's good for you, too. So tomorrow morning... Be smart. Enjoy this breakfast treat. Quaker Puff Rice or Quaker Puff Wheat. It was during the summer months when Sergeant Preston was called to the inspector's office in Dawson City. The concern on the inspector's face was evident as he leaned forward across the desk and spoke in a serious tone. Sergeant, word has been received of strange happenings at the Northwest Mounted Police Summer Training Quarters down the Yukon River near the border. Yes, sir, the Bear City Quarters. That's right. You spoke of strange happenings, sir. Just what do you mean by that? Well, I can't explain any more than anyone else can, Sergeant. So far, there seems to be no explanation. But in one week, two of our recruits have disappeared while on river patrol duty. Later to be found at the water's edge, dead. And you say there's no explanation, sir? So far, none. That's why I've sent for you, Sergeant. I want you to go down there and see what you can find out. All right, sir. We'll leave at once. If the mystery can be solved at all, Sergeant, I feel that it will take you and that fine dog of yours to do it. Thank you for your confidence, sir. We'll do our best. I know you will. You can get all the details when you get there. Goodbye and good luck, Sergeant. A few days later, Sergeant Preston, with his great dog, King, arrived at the outpost. He learned little beyond what the inspector had told him. And the afternoon of his arrival, accompanied by a young corporal, Sergeant Preston rode to the water's edge. As King trotted along behind, the two horsemen moved slowly along a short stretch of beach that was hemmed in on each side by high, rocky bluffs. It was along here, Sergeant, that both men were found. I see. You say this stretch of beach is always patrolled, Corporal? Right, Sergeant. It's about the only logical landing place for anyone trying to avoid the border patrol. Hmm. There's been reports of a lot of contraband being smuggled into the territory from Alaska. Yes, so I've heard. Isn't it strange we haven't seen the man who's on duty along here? Say, that's right. wonder why we haven't. Hey. Oh, there. Oh, 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 oh. Corporal. Yes, I heard someone calling for help. Yes, I heard it, too. Look. King's at the water's edge. Someone's in the water out there. Come on. Get him, King. After him, fella. The dog's swimming out to him. Yes. I'll go help him as soon as I get this coat and gun belt off. There. King's almost to him. Wait here. I'll go out there. Right, sir. Hold on. I'm coming after you. Get him, King. That's the boy, King. Oh, easy, fella. You'll be all right now. We'll get to the shore. Come on. A short time later, Sergeant Preston and King reached shore with a man they had saved from the water. As the corporal bent over the victim, he spoke to Sergeant Preston. He hasn't responded to our efforts very well, Sergeant. I wonder how he happened to be out there in the water. He's the man who was supposed to be here on patrol duty. Yes. Uh, oh, he's opening his eyes now. 
He's trying to speak. Tell, tell them at the outpost that the devil... Take it easy, fellow. You'll be all right. Oh, oh, it's too late. Sergeant, Sergeant Tellerman got me, that the devil got me. I found out. Sergeant Yes, Corporal, he's gone. Ted? But I thought once a person gained consciousness after nearly drowning... There was something more than the effects of the water here, Corporal. <laughs> Quiet, King. I... I heard what he said. Something about a devil. Yes. I wonder what he meant. I don't know, but I intend to find out somehow. Come on, Corporal, let's get him back to the outpost. Uh, uh, this business gives me the creep, Sergeant. What do you mean? This is the third man on duty at this stretch of beach to die. The other two were found washed ashore here. I don't like it at all. Neither do I, but there must be some logical explanation for Maybe it. so. But, Sergeant, the men at the outpost are all feeling mighty nervous about it. Unexplained happenings like this are enough to unnerve any group of men, Corporal. That's why it's necessary to find out just what's behind all these deaths, and the sooner the better. Later at the outpost, Sergeant Preston was talking to the officer in charge. Too bad, sir, that another man had to go before we could find out what's behind all this. I know, I know. Tell me exactly what happened, Sergeant. Well, sir, the corporal and I were riding along that small stretch of beach when we heard a cry for help. Someone seemed to be drowning. With King's help, we got him out of the water and did what we could to revive him. Yes, I'm sure you did, Sergeant. Go on. He regained consciousness, but he seemed terrified. He tried to tell us, to warn us about something. He said to tell you the devil got him. What? Great Scott, that again? What do you mean, sir? Sergeant, are you sure he mentioned that? Why, yes, of course. Does it have any meaning to you? I have no idea what the reference is, Sergeant. But I do know this. The man you found a short time ago was the third one to die because of this so-called devil. The third? Yes. But I thought the other two were already dead when they were found. Oh, one of them came too long enough to whisper that word, devil. He said it two or three times, then died. The other one was dead. But a prospector was found dying on that stretch of beach just two days ago. He, too, spoke in fear of the devil. Is it absolutely necessary to patrol that beach, sir? You see, firearms and other contraband have been smuggled in and supplied to the Indians in the territory north of here. That short stretch of low beach is about the only accessible landing place for boats that might bring the stuff up the river. I see. By the way, another peculiar thing about these deaths. Each of the victims was found in about the same spot along the beach, just above the bend where you say you found a man today. You mean to say all three, claiming they had met that devil, were found in about the same place? That's right. Oh, uh, Corporal Drew, the young corporal who was with you today, has gone down there to stand guard duty now. What? Yes. He said he'd be extra careful. Someone has Excuse to Excuse me, sir. There's no time to but, lose. Sergeant. I have a feeling he needs some help, sir. Come on, King. We have to hurry. There. Meantime, Corporal Drew had returned to the stretch of beach. He rode slowly up and down, his eyes scanning the wide stretch of water. Then he decided to ride toward the bend. Get up. As Corporal Drew rounded the bend, he found that the beach ended sharply against a cliff like bluff. He pulled up and dismounted. Oh, oh, oh. Easy, boy. Uh, up there on that bluff would be a good place for a lookout. I'll climb up there right now. Slowly, the young Mountie climbed to the top of the bluff. Finally reaching the top, he stood looking out over the water. Just the place to watch for him. Uh. Hearing voices around under the cliff. Lean over the edge and look. That's funny. I felt sure I heard men talking. No boat in sight and no one around. I went. Huh. Smoke coming from the face of the cliff on there. How can that be? I'd better get down from here and try to have a look. Slowly, Corporal Drew made his way down from the high bluff to the beach. There he looked around, startled. What? My horse. He's gone. 
It's strange he wouldn't leave me like that. Uh, maybe something scared him off, though. I'll have to walk it back to the outpost. But first, I'll try to get a look at the face of that cliff. His curiosity aroused, Corporal went to the water's edge. He noticed a narrow ledge just above the waterline and extending along the base of the low-hanging cliff. Removing his boots and dropping them in the sand, he cautiously stepped upon the ledge and carefully moved along. Well, I'll... Big opening. Right into the cliff from the water. There must be a cave back in there. Yeah. That's where that smoke I saw was coming from. There's a ledge going into it, too. I'll follow it and see what's in there. A short distance inside the opening, a rowboat had been drawn up on a flat, rocky surface which formed the floor of a large cavern. By the light of a big campfire which they had kindled, four men were busy unloading several boxes. Hurry up, we have another load to bring, and I don't like it in here. <laughs> Hans is scared of the devil back there in the pool. As long as the sun shines through the opening of the cave, it stays down in the pool. I don't like the light of the fire either. Well, we keep it burning while we work it. Just the same, I don't like being in here, Ben. I don't. Somebody's come in here. It's the big guy. Oh, no, you. Have it covered. Drop your gun, Molly. What? I have you covered with a gun. Come back. I call it in here. Good work, Ned. Bring him in. Get going, you. All right. Here he is. So, another one spying on us, hmm? <laughs> yeah. They never learn. I'm beginning to learn a lot. A lot you'll soon forget, too. You wish you never found out about this cave, Marty, when you meet up with the devil. We'll continue our story in just a moment. I wonder if we're going to have a visitor today. Hey, who's this? It's me. You? Well, gosh, who are you? You look, well, gee, like a beachcomber. Like you'd been shipwrecked for years on a deserted island. I was, long time ago. But who are you? Robinson Crusoe. Robinson Crusoe? Right, and I'm mighty glad to be here. You mean, not on that island? Yes, sir. Didn't you like it there? No, it was all right, except for one thing. What's that? No grocery stores there. No grocery stores? No place to buy Quaker Puff Tweet and Quaker Puff Right. Oh, you go for the cereal shot from gun. Do I? Look, my day just isn't right unless I started off with a heaping bowl full topped with milk or cream and fruit. Well, Robinson, old boy, no wonder you'd rather be here than on that island. And say, fellas and girls, take a tip. Ask your grocer for Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. They're the famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from gun. Yes, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. No wonder these king-size premium grains melt in your mouth. They're actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. What's more, wheat or rice shot from guns is good for you. Furnishes added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Ask Mom right now to order big red and blue packages of delicious Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice. Shot from guns. Now to continue our story. Corporal Drew stood in the cave facing the group of hard-looking men who had captured him. At the mention of the devil, he felt a strange tinge of fear creep over him, mingled with curiosity. As he gazed about him, straining to see beyond the light of the campfire, the smuggler spoke again. Curious, eh? Huh? <laughs> Imagine that. He's curious, just like the others were. Since he's so curious to see what's in here, we'll give him a chance to find out. Light a couple of torches. We 
We'll row him to the small ledge across that devil's pool and leave him there. After lighting the torches, the men forced the corporal into the boat, and they rowed across about 30 feet of dark, forbidding waters in a pool at the back of the cave. There, he was made to stand on a narrow ledge just above the water's edge. There. Now, maybe you'll be here when we come back, and maybe you won't. We'll see about that, mister. Uh, Maybe he's planning to swim across the pool and go for help at the outpost. (laughs) Well, if he isn't afraid of what's in that pool, let him go ahead and swim. Guess he'll meet the devil sooner or later anyway. Devil? What do you mean by that? You'll find out, my friend. When you meet up with what's in that pool, you won't do any more snooping. You can be sure of that. Leaving Corporal Drew on the ledge of the pool in the cave, the smugglers went out for another boatload. Meantime, Sergeant Preston and King arrived at the beach and rode along in search of the corporal. That's strange. The corporal doesn't seem to be around. The beach is so trampled with hoof marks, it's hard to tell anything from them. Well, get down toward that bend, King. Maybe we can find him there. Come on, now. Sergeant Preston, with King running ahead, rode down the beach and around the bend. Reaching the bluff where the corporal had dismounted, Sergeant Preston pulled up. Hold there, hold on. Couldn't have gone any farther this way. I was excited about something near the water's edge. What is it, fella? Steady now. Boots. Must be the corporal's, I wonder. Find him, King. Find Corporal Drew, fella. King's running to the base of the cliff as if the corporal had gone along there. What is it, fella? Oh, you think he went along that narrow ledge, King? Corporal! Corporal Jewel! It's the corporal, but where is he? I can't figure. The ledge close to the water's edge. King's sniffing along that. Go on, fella! Find him! For some time after the men had left the cave, the corporal stood on the narrow ledge on the far side of the dark pool. The flickering light from the campfire beyond added to the blackness of the pool. Stifling the uneasiness that welled up within him, Corporal Drew had almost decided to chance swimming across the pool. But again, he seemed to hear the mocking words of the man who had left him there. Well, if he isn't afraid of what's in that pool, let him go ahead and swim. He doesn't meet the devil sooner or later anyway. The young Mountie's courage failed him, and he continued to stare at the inky water before him. The smuggler's words puzzled him. Yet remembering how nervous one of them had seemed, Drew felt there was something about the pool that was to be feared. A rippling of water drew his attention. What's that? Suddenly, he glanced down at his feet, and a cry of terror burst from his lips. Help! Help! Over here! Look out for that thing! It's after me! Help! Stop him! Stop that dog! King, King, come back! King! King! King saw it! He's coming back! Help him out! You all right, Corporal? Yes, Sergeant. I... I'm all right. I think you can get over safely now. No, no, I... I haven't got the nerve. That thing sunk to the bottom. I'll swim over to you. Here, I'll pull my gun. Catch it. Uh, I got it. But you better wait, Sergeant. Just keep your eyes open and be ready to shoot again. All right. Uh, see? I got across all right. Now, come on, Corporal. Don't be afraid. All right. There. Now, let me help you. I would have had the nerve alone. I'm having you safe. Get off the thing in the pool. Here we are. Yeah. That was a large oh, no. devil fish, Corporal. We didn't get here any too soon. It might have dragged you under. A devil fish? I never saw one before. It's not usual to find one of them here, but they thrive in most any climate. This one may have been brought here. Those long, slimy arms were almost touching my feet. If you and King hadn't come along when you King did... King found you. Yes. And he didn't hesitate to jump into the pool. He's a brave dog, all right. All right. Well, you'd better forget about that experience, Corporal. What I want to know is how you got over there on that ledge. Some men in a rowboat. They came in here. I, I investigated and they caught me. 
I'm sure they were smugglers, Sergeant. They brought those boxes over there. Huh? I'll have a look at those boxes. There's no doubt about it. These boxes contain firearms. They said they were coming back with another load. Good. I want to meet those men. First for what they did to those other guards, and then for their smuggling. We can't handle them alone, Sergeant. They're armed and tough. There were four of them. We'll have help, Corporal. What do you mean? We have King with us. We'll be a reception committee ready for those men when they do come back. And I hope they don't keep us waiting. For some time, Sergeant Preston and the corporal, with King beside them, waited inside the cave for the return of the smugglers. Finally, King growled a warning. King, here's something. I'll take a look out through the cave opening. See anything? Yes, they're coming, Corporal. We'll get behind the boxes and give them a surprise. Come on, King. Here we are. Now crouch down. Quiet, boy. I hear them now. So that's what you told him, hey, eh? Don't move, there? any of you. Look, another mountain, and, and the one be left on the ledge. Yeah, so it is. But don't let him scare you. I'll show up. Oh, you don't. Oh, I'm hit. You won't get me. Suddenly dodging behind the box they just put down, Hans raised his gun and aimed it at Preston. In a flash, the great dog king streaked around the box, grabbing the smuggler by the gun arm and throwing him off balance. Help! Help! The devil is the devil thing! It's loose! Help! Down, king! Down, fella! It was a dog. I thought... You thought that monster you had in the pool had grabbed you, eh? Yes. Don't talk, Hans. They can't prove anything like that against us. Huh? No, that's right. The others must have found this cave and we were away. And the devil thing got them. Yeah. That's the way it was. The money we left over there is standing beside you. So you can't charge us with murder. No? We'll see about that. You can't prove a thing. You two others, drop your guns. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. We'll drop them. Pick them up, Corporal. All right. I have them. Keep them covered. Now you. Maybe I can get you to talk. I'll put up my gun and use my fist. So. Well, I'm not afraid of you. Take that! Quiet, King. This will be a sturdy I'll show you back. Hard hitter, aren't you? But not hard enough. He's out cold, Sergeant. Yes. No use using that method. But I enjoyed it anyway. You still haven't proved anything. We will. Get into the boat. What for? I said get into that boat, all of you. Look, I I wounded. Bullet scraped my arm. Get in. No, why should we? All right, keep that dog away. Now we'll see whether you tell the truth or not. Meantime, the officer from the outpost with a few of his men arrived at the beach and found Preston's horse standing near the bluff. Oh, 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 oh. There's the sergeant's horse. I don't see him or the corporal. Maybe the devil business got them, too. Yes, this beach is bad luck. They shouldn't have come here. That's enough of that kind of talk, men. We came here because I was wondering if the sergeant discovered anything, that's all. He and the corporal are around someplace. What? Uh, that boy seemed to come from a cave in the face of the cliff. Yeah, let's investigate. Right. Steady. Come with me. Yes, here's a ledge along here. Follow me, men. All right. A few minutes later, the officer and the men entered the cave, and a surprising sight met their eyes. Get us off this ledge, Sergeant. We'll walk on us. Walk first. Otherwise, we'll leave you to swim across. No, no, we didn't. We put the guards here on the ledge. That devil got them. You did not. Sergeant Preston. What's he talking about? Hello, sir. You were just in time to hear them confess they left the guards on that ledge over there. Yes, but... The devil they speak about was a large devil fish they kept in that pool. What? Devil fish? So that's what it meant. Yes, sir. King and Sergeant Preston saved me from it. It's dead now, but it almost got me. Dead? Then we've been fooled into talking. King helped us capture them. And he even dove into the pool and started toward me when that, uh, that awful thing was still alive. Sergeant Preston riddled it with bullets. Uh, Devilfish. Why, it's fantastic. It's almost unbelievable. 
Sergeant, those men are fiends. It's really an octopus, sir, though people refer to them most of the time as devilfish. Octopus? But how on earth did it get here? Do you remember, sir, the beginning of the summer of this year, there was a freak show that came to Dawson City. Do you remember? Yes. Yeah, that's right. And they showed an octopus, only they called it a devilfish. Yeah, this sounds a little more terrifying, perhaps. Anyway, the boat on which the show was leaving was rammed and sunk a short way down the river. That monster was in a tank aboard the ship. Yes, 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 yes. Jake was with the show. It was his idea to catch that thing in the net and put it in the cave to cover all my smuggling. So that explains it. But the the guards, if it got them, why weren't they... Well, well so far as is known, sir, all an octopus does is wrap its tentacles around a person and pull him under the water. When the victim ceases to struggle, the octopus releases him. Oh, I see. The bodies were bruised, but otherwise unmarked. Well, Sergeant, as I said before, those men are absolute fiends. They're the smugglers you're after, sir. If hadn't been for King, I wouldn't have found the corporal in time, I'm afraid. <laughs> you're right. King's a wonderful dog. You can say that over and over again, sir. All right, men. We'll get those killers over here and take them back to the outpost. Uh, Hurry up. All right, fellow. I guess I can say that thanks to you, King, the case of the devil fish and the smugglers is closed here and now. Hey, King? In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Here is a tip. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice is never sold in bags or bulk. Not on your life. To get the famous crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big Quaker red and blue package. You'll go for both delicious kinds. For variety, eat the wheat one time, rice the next. These tasty giant breakfast grains shot from guns are made from only the premium grains. So for the best, always insist on Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puff rice. Have some for breakfast tomorrow. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Moose River Murder. When King and I started out with young Constable Forrest on his first patrol of the Moose River District, we thought it would be simply a routine trip. But there's nothing routine about murder. This trip turned out to be one of the most exciting cases we ever encountered. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker puffed rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.